Okay, we are on Films Gone Wild. We're going to talk about okay. the film, actually iconic, Richard Estes, and we've got Olympia Stone. Olympia, welcome to Films Gone Wild. Thank you. Happy All to right. be here. So, uh, as we begin every interview, uh, we leave it up to you to introduce our audience to the film, the folks that have not seen Actually Iconic as yet. Tell us what the film is about and who the film is about. The film is about um, a painter, a photorealist painter named Richard Estes, who is now 88 years old, but when I made the film was, you know, 86. <laughs> Um, but he is a wonderful, humble, um, sort of looks like your grandfather walking around New York City with his camera. And then you see what he's created over the course of his incredibly prodigious, you know, 50 year career of painting, which is these sort of scintillating views, especially of New York City, um, the ferry, the, the Staten Island Ferry, Columbus Circle, Times Square, and he's, in a way, he's captured New York, especially through the late 60s, 70s, and 80s, um, a New York that really doesn't exist anymore, um, and in the process, sort of masterfully, you know, perfected this incredible skill at um, rendering reflections on storefronts and these incredible sort of tricks of painting which with perspective so that it it really does look like a photograph and you kind of have to look at it and squint sometimes and then you realize that no it's totally a painting but um you know Richard Richard has um just gotten better and better over the years but because he's so quiet and humble he the he has not received the recognition that I feel like he deserves at this stage in his career. So that's why I made the film. Well, he's a fascinating documentary subject because he is so incredibly unassuming. And, yeah. <laughs> and you know, and, 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 I, and I was actually amused watching the film thinking as a documentarian, you know, where, you know, you know, either, either with, you know, um, shooting the, with the camera myself or standing beside the camera, um, like, you know, you know, trying to draw him out and, 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 you know, and, and, and get him to, you know, to open up. Um, but, you know, and it's not like, it's not like he, he is, um, you know, ag you know, aggressively like doing the, you know, the, 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 the classic Greta Garbo thing of leave me alone or anything like that. It's just that his personality is just not, not one to, you know, to, 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 to draw that not in. Not a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so here, my first question is, when you, when you are uh, profiling a person like this, when you, when you are introducing um, the general public via your film to a person like this, um, what is your sense as you're doing it, you know, the, it, what, what is the sense of pressure that you feel because you obviously have an affinity for him. You obviously mm -hmm. think, you know, something, you know, you know, you know, of him to go, you know something, people deserve to know Richard and in his art. So, I, so I'd love to talk, you know, for you to talk about that. Like what, what's going through your head as you were shooting him, interviewing him, you know, and, and, t and undertaking this project as far as, you know, it's gonna be up to me to introduce everybody to Richard. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I think my primary pressure that I felt was exactly what you said, which is sometimes interviewing Richard could be like pulling teeth in the sense that he does not like to opine. He, you know, he's so ready, he's so no BS that he doesn't, he's not somebody who likes to sort of go off about painting and talking about, you know, he's not into that. <laughs> And he definitely feels like his paintings should just speak for themselves. Why does he have to explain them? He doesn't like to psychoanalyze. And so it was, you know, it was tricky. I, I also felt like um, getting him to talk about his personal life. He's very much a man of his generation, meaning, you know, you didn't really talk about stuff the way people do now. It just wasn't as open. And 
I think coming from the Midwest, he's also quite, has a natural sort of reserve as well. So I felt pressure to <laughs> extract information from him that I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get in a way. And I do think as time went on and he became more comfortable, you know, with the cameras and filming and um, sort of that he could trust me more and more as we went along. Um, I do think he opened up as much as Richard is ever going to be able to open up, you know, and right. I did have to explain to him, Richard, you know, I do want to talk a little bit about what it was like for you to be a gay man in the late 60s in New York, you know, and, um, but, you know, he would really sort of, like, he doesn't look back on things and think, wow, I lived through a moment. He thinks, what was the big deal? You know, like other people had it bad. It wasn't like I was, you know, suffering in some way. So I also didn't want to create a story that wasn't there to begin with, but I, I wanted to sort of reflect the era that he had lived through and get enough biographical information to, um, you know, to, to be able to give people something because, you know, and Richard would always say like, why do people care? Like who, who cares about my personal life? And it's, I just think it's important when you do, when you do documentaries about artists to know something about the maker. It's not that there's always a one-to-one -one correlation with the work, like, you're going to get insight into the work itself necessarily, but I do think it gives people access. It gives people a way in, and I think that can be helpful. Well, I'm all, and I'm I always, I your question. <laughs> no, no, it, it does. It does because it also leads into the next question, which I'm always interested to hear is like, you know, in this case, you have Richard's art and, you know, and, and you could just have a series of shots of these, um, you know, you know, literally, uh, you know, works of art that 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 so many people are infinitely familiar with, and you know, and and then you could have people opining on, you know, you know his his work with reflections, and you know, and 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 his specialty, you know, it, you know, it, you know, as far as that being known for that, and then you have, you know just his personality that you're showing and you have his relationship with Jose and, and you have, and, but how you deliver that to us is the key, right? That, that it's, it's like, you know, how, how on your outline you go, you know, I'm going to give a little bit of Richard's personality here and then I'm going to drop in, you know, just a little bit of the history. And then I'm going to go into to this, that I'm all endlessly fascinated by because I've talked to so many documentarians by this point, um, you know, and some have it mapped out to the extreme and they're just literally dropping in footage and interviews into this thing that they've mapped out. And some are just have no idea where it's going to take them. And, you know, they, they started filming and then, you know, and then in the editing bay, two or three or four years later, then they're cobbling it all together and go, oh, look at the film that I have. Yeah. So I, I really want to hear you talk about that process because again, you are introducing us to Richard and his art and how you did that is an art in itself. So talk mm. about that. Please. Yeah, well, I would say that I am definitely more in the camp of going into a film and not knowing, not having a plan necessarily, having an idea of where I want the film to go the kinds of the kind of film I want to make, but not not necessarily having it all mapped out at all. <laughs> um, one thing I knew I wanted to do was get Richard in back into a lot of the places where he painted just because of his age. And I was worried that if we sat inside and did inside interviews, it would be really there would be really low energy. And I knew that would be a problem. So I was trying to get him out into the city as much as possible. Um, and also, you know, up in Maine to see him hiking a little bit or just things like that, you know. Um, I think that, you know, I, I do not do, I think as if, you know, I, I don't work on these totally by myself. I, I do have a partner that I work with when I get to the editing phase. Um, and she and she watches it. She's always my first viewer. 
and then she'll come back and sort of have suggestions or ideas about like why don't you move this here or this might you know this could be good here um, so that is sort of the way that I tend to work but I I'm definitely more in the camp of I I've I'm shooting, I have ideas of things I know I want to get. Once I've gotten them, I'm editing as I'm going often, um, putting, putting together sequences, um, trying to figure out like, you know, what the film wants to be and what is speaking to me in the material. And then I kind of go from there. So it's not, I don't ever go to the end, film, 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 and then get to the edit room and then finally see what everything is you know i'm working on it as i'm going often and i do think for me that's a helpful process um so um i probably haven't answered this question <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to talk about it, actually because it's just you know it's like you're you're just doing what you do and it's hard to like think about it afterwards sometimes like well, how I don't know. I do tend to write things down, ideas, outlines, you know, um, themes for different sections. Um, and, you know, um, I don't know. Yeah. Well, so. Well, you know, so, and, and, and here, I mean, I, you did answer the question and, you know, and, 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 and th thank you. And here's the reason, you know, again, I, I, I like to, to discuss that is because for someone who's not, you know, a documentary filmmaker and, you know, and, and, and is literally, you know, just happens, um, you know, to, you know, to, to find a film like this and go, who's this guy? Okay. You know what, you know, and, and, and some of it literally is not savvy to any of this. They, you know, they, this is just dropped in yeah. their lap or on their screen or, you know, or what have you, then, then, yeah. then, you know, then they have, they don't have a concept of the angst, that someone like you may be going through no, you know, as, as, know. As, you're, as you're trying to yeah, you know, the pain and suffering. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, you know, you know, or even, even just the, 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 you know, the, the, the general thought process of, listen, yeah. you know, if, you know, if, if I, if I don't give you a little background on, you know, on this guy, then, you know, then you may not care, uh, you know, about him wandering around, you know, 45th street, um, you know, taking pictures of people, you know, and, 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 you know, and, and architecture, um, you know, if I don't, if I don't do that in the right way. And so I, I think right. that, 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 like I said, that in itself is a fascinating process to me. And, and in this case, I think you did it really, really well, because this is a guy who, you know, again, um, you know, is not, uh, you know, is not a reality TV personality type, no. you know, he, you no, know, he, you know, he is, you know, if anything, he is almost like a, like a, uh, like, you know, like the groundhog that doesn't come out, uh, you know, and, you know, and, and well, you know, twice a year you see him and he takes a picture and then, you know, and then a work of art shows up. <laughs> right. Um, and, and, and I, and I think honestly, you did a wonderfully job with it. And, uh, and, and it, it was, it was, a, it's a great introduction to him uh, as a person and an artist. The film, again, is actually iconic, Richard Estes, and we've been talking with Olympia Stone. Olympia, it's been great talking movies with you. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, and now we, we've got one last 